what were some of the biggest challenges? In uh, obviously convincing the committee was one of them. Well, if you're talking about the UPC symbol itself, of course, it was how do you fit it in the one and a half square inches and make it printable. Okay. If you're talking about the whole system, it was the uh, the optics were a problem because you. It was the early use of lasers, and there weren't even standards with lasers. We didn't know what the safety standards were. In fact, we hired people out here at the university to do tests where they shined lasers in monkeys' eyes to find out at what power it would damage them. So we ended up being limited to half a milliwatt. Now, again, to meet the requirements, and with our Lissajous pattern, it, the beam had to move very rapidly. When it moved very rapidly, you got very little light back. Mm -hmm. So the signal-to-noise ratio was a absolutely terror trying to solve. So that was one of the major problems. Um, that was about it. Okay. Were there any printability issues with this, the symbol as it turned out? And the thing was to get the bars as big as possible. It, like I said, it's a seven module code. You had to get the modules as big as you could print them. Mm -hmm. Now, the main the breakthrough came when I realized that I could break the symbol into two halves. When I could break the symbol into two halves, I could build each half less than one fourth the size of the full symbol. Okay. And still be able to have it reached by each scan line. Okay. And so you could then build it, if I could build the symbol in two halves and be able to scan them as two separate items and have enough information to put them back together in the computer, then I could have bigger bars. And again, bigger bars meant easier printing. What kind of tolerances were you allowed to have? We ended up with uh, the narrowest bar was 12 mils and the tolerance given to the printer was plus or minus four mils. Which so he had a third of his... That's right. So that was really quite good. Very generous. Yes. yes. Okay, so little splotches or things like that, they weren't really going to cause a problem. Well, again, splotches didn't matter because you took several scans through the, through the label. Right. And as, what we did is we would scan, uh, we would scan the label we would decide which half it was, and we'd put it in a register. We would compare it to what was already in the register, and if it was already there, we'd simply up the count. If mm -hmm. it was a new one, we would put it in. Mm -hmm. Then when we were getting no more scans, we'd look and find out which one of the left half had the highest count, which one of the right half had the highest count, put them together, and see if the modulo checked. If it did, we had a good read. Oh, fantastic. Okay. And that produced an incredibly high acceptance rate on the symbols. Yeah, we were very good. I, if the symbol was printed uh, properly, even close, yeah. uh, it would read just about 100% of the time. How, how many scans did you do? You think you actually got on a symbol with a normal checkout girl? If she was inexperienced, we would probably get as many as 10. Okay. As they got experienced. That oh, number dropped to three or four. <laughs> just three or four. But still, you had good check digits. We still to, uh, had very good. Pull things up there. Um.